About a month ago, I've wrapped up my main project due to lack of motivation and near future prospects. There is a potential, but it's far beyond horizon. I was looking for something new I could work on. I'm an avid YouTube viewer, and I watch a lot of content, when suddenly, YouTube recommended me Pirate Software's Make Video Games. Thor's points were logical, appealing, and inspirational. That video convinced me to try making video games. Since I've played video games all of my life, it sounded like a plausible next skill to master. So now that I knew what I want to work on, all I had to do is to pick and learn the right tool. Before picking, there were certain qualities I was looking for. I want to make games simplest way possible. My previous project was basically a 3D animation software. I had to make my own UI framework, OpenGL renderer, manage resources, configuration and everything else. That was cumbersome. I don't want to do low level stuff right now so just give me a scripting language with high level API so I could achieve things the simplest way possible. I want to ship my games on majority of PC platforms from Windows. My previous project was written in Java. While it did cross-compile, it wasn't the best user experience, as on macOS and Linux, you could only launch it via terminal. I couldn't manage to find a way to distribute my app as a macOS bundle or Nix app image. Finally, I wanted the tool to be open source. I don't foresee myself making any money from it anytime soon, but once I am, I'd rather donate every now and then. Being the tool open source also means I'm not obliged to share my identity, I can modify it, and I'm not limited in terms of what I can do with it for the most part. From all possible choices, Godot was an obvious pick. I had some prior experience of making an unfinished chess roguelike with Godot 3, but that wasn't enough to start making games again. I brushed up my Godot skill by watching some tutorials about making a simple game in Godot 4 from scratch, and by making a couple of test games to regain the experience. Finally, I was ready for my first proper game. I don't know about you, but I had an impression that since I've played so many video games, I thought designing them should be easy, because I know what I like about games and what I don't. Well, I was so wrong. Designing games isn't easy at all. You have to either put a twist on a well-established game mechanic, or come up with something completely new. Beside that, anything that involves numbers will have to be tweaked a thousand of times to get the speed of projectiles, jump height, acceleration, etc. to feel right. If you go into RPG, that's even more difficult as you would have to come up with unique formulas and number systems that would work correctly and bring the player fun without under or overpowering them. Basically, it's tough. For my first proper Godot game, I didn't want to make a huge game like World of Warcraft. I know that trying to make a big project with a lack of experience will just make me burn out and quit. That's why I wanted to make a very simple game, with one simple core mechanic, that can be reused. When I was pondering, I realized I could take the idea of another test game I made, and instead of using words, I would use numbers. And that's how I came up with my numbers game. The concept is very simple, you're a hero, and you have to defeat mobs using basic math skills, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. There is no real story or anything, just you and your arithmetic skill. It's certainly not a game for everyone, but I thought it could be useful. After creating the Godot project, I managed to implement the basic fighting cycle in a couple of hours. Even though main mechanic was implemented, the rest of my development time, which was a week, was to polish the game. The first thing I did after that is I added the main menu with level selection. Levels were basically custom Godot resources where I could specify title, player, mobs, etc. which will be loaded upon choosing that level, while the arithmetic exercises were hard-coded based on the current level's index. Next, I added stars. It's mostly a cosmetic element, but I thought it could be an encouragement to replay levels to get all three stars. Once all of the levels were defined, I really struggled to play forest levels. As the number became bigger, it was harder for me to calculate the final result in given time frame. So I added a couple of UX features to the game. First one was no timer button, which allows to disable countdown. That also disables the possibility earning third star but at least you'll have as much time to calculate bigger numbers. And the second one was a canvas on which you can draw. The point of that feature is that you could either just write down carrying out when adding two digit numbers 
or you could do the entire calculation on the canvas. The rest of the time I spent polishing the looks, like adding background tile maps, music, more out sounds when an enemy get hit and etc. And that's how I made my first proper Godot game. Conclusions Implementing the core mechanic was the easiest and the fastest task for some reason, while polishing and finishing the game took the longest. It's like the 90-90 rule coming to life. I'm still not satisfied with my game, because I expected it to be more fun, but I guess it's very hard to make solving math problems feel fun. What I've noticed is that the complexity of the game increases too steep after completing desert levels, but I don't know how to solve it. I think the game is finished, but it's not good. The only thing I can think of adding is a roguelike mode, where with every defeated mob, math problems become progressively difficult. Anyways, the main objective of this game wasn't to make a good game, it was to finish a game and learn more about Godot, which I did. There are many games I can make, now that I'm finished with this project, so I don't see the point of super polishing this game, because I could always return to it later. Hopefully that was an interesting video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.